Hi, I'm Vicki Hogarth, and welcome to Southwest Magazine. Since 1978, the riding of Bunny the Isle, St. John West, has elected a liberal MLA in the provincial election. Progressive conservative Andrea Anderson Mason, a lawyer from St. George, broke the Liberals' 40-year run this September when she beat longtime liberal Rick Doucette by over 1,400 votes. We're excited to have her back on CHCO to weigh in on what's next for New Brunswick post-election and to fill us in on who exactly is Premier anyway. So, Andrea, let's start off by talking about your historic win in the Funny of the Isle St. John riding. You won by f at least 1,400 votes. I believe it was 1,387. Nice. Yeah, no recount here. And the first conservative, well, the first anyone to beat the Liberals in 40 years. In, I don't know the exact day, but it's 39 years, 11 months, and I don't know, 20 some days, I think is what it was. So yeah, it was a pretty big deal. And on top of that, you're new to politics. So really quite a historic win for showing that you can come from, I want to say away, and be the person people vote for. I'm new to politics, but I'm not new to representing people. and. I don't know if that might make a difference or not, but it was a very exciting night. Uh, in the beginning, a lot of people said that we couldn't do it, and we just had a sense that that's what was happening. So it really wasn't a big surprise for us. We could feel it. What do you think it was about your campaign that people connected to and to you as a person? Oh, I don't know. When people come to see me as a lawyer, I often have people leave the office and say, you're not what I expected. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what that means, but I take it as a compliment every time. And uh, I remember actually at one point we were doing door to door in West St. John and I started to get out of the car. So we're like in a subdivision in the city and I started to get out of the car and the guy was, the homeowner was uh, raking his lawn and he sort of stopped me and he was like, don't even bother. And I was like, are you sure? And I kept getting out of the car and I stood and I talked to him for like 10 or 15 minutes. And at the end of 15 minutes, he had this big smile on his face and he shook my hand and he said, you did it, you got my vote. I am getting out. I wasn't even gonna vote. I'm so disgusted where New Brunswick politics are right now, but you did it, you got my vote. And I said, your first mistake was you let me out of the car. And uh, he kind of laughed, but I said, have you ever met a politician like me? And he said, no. So I, I think, I hope that we're offering something fresh and different. That's what I really want to see in New Brunswick politics. You made quite an effort to go door to door. Why do you think that's still such a strong component of campaigning in New Brunswick? It is the only way to really see what is in people's hearts. And my commitment as we neared the end of the campaign, my commitment to the people I met at the door changed. And what I started telling people, and I know that I will do in my heart absolutely, is I will continue to do door to door for as long as I am elected. Because it is not enough to just show up at a church breakfast or a barbecue or a ribbon cutting ceremony. You don't get to know people, but when you are standing on their doorsteps, when you're sitting on their porch, when you're at their kitchen table and you're having real conversations, you know, like what, even what we're doing right now, that's when you actually get to know people and they open up. Mm -hmm. Were there concerns or issues that people brought up that you hadn't even considered as being as big as they turned out to be from going door to door? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I saw some differences depending on which area of the ridings I was in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think both ridings in Charlotte County went conservative from being liberal before? Mm -hmm. um, do you see any reason behind that shift in this area in particular? Well, I think that there is a frustration right now with the liberal government because not only did we see a shift towards conservative representation, we also have to acknowledge that there was a shift towards third party support as well. So I can't just say it was a conservative movement. It is, uh, it's a whole provincial movement when we look at what happened with the third parties and from somebody who's in a traditional party, I have to be very cognizant of that and I'm, I'm hearing it, I'm listening. You haven't been a progressive conservative for your entire career. Can you explain what brought you over to that party and, and why and when? Well, I have always had conservative leanings, I would say. I met Greg Thompson, I think I was about nine when he was campaigning, 
and he came to my door and I absolutely fell in love with politics at that time and uh, always followed his career. I went to Ottawa with him when I was a teenager and spent some time there, loved it. So I think I always had a little bit of conservative leanings, but for a time when I was working in St. John at a law office, a major law firm there, it was very closely connected with uh, a liberal candidate and I worked very hard on two federal liberal campaigns. Truth be told, I came home and voted for Greg Thompson each time because I didn't live in uh, that St. John riding. I was still living here in Charlotte County, so I still came home and voted for Greg. Will the two of you work together to get certain things accomplished now that, that you're both in office? I sure hope so. It's like working with my mentor, so it's great. Yeah, and he's, he's just a great person. He is such a wealth of information, such a resource. You know, even in the past few days, we've been meeting as a party and we've been meeting with the legislature because this is very unknown territory that we're in right now with this minority government and there have been several times where we've been discussing as a group and somebody will speak up and say let's ask Greg. Greg has more experience than anyone in this room. Let's get his opinion and he's just great. So then what are people saying about exactly what is happening in terms of who is our premier are we going to have another election? They're both votes are being recounted right now. So I think a lot of New Brunswickers want to know, it would be great to hear from an insider where you think things are going. Oh, and I, I don't know, right? This is foreign territory for everyone. And it's exciting. I am excited to be part of it. I wish I could have celebrated the win a little more than I was able to because, you know, at first it's like, well, we got the most seats. And then it's like, wait a minute. Mr. Galant is still the premier, <laughs> so it was it was confusing for all of us, and it's we're just going to have to keep our eyes open for the next few weeks and see where this is going. So he's There's no rules. To, he's able to do the throne speech on October 23rd. He is. So we're using the date October 23rd because initially, uh, when the government was dissolved, that is when he indicated that the legislature would reconvene. So if you recall, right after the election, when they were doing interviews with Mr. Gallant, there were discussions um, about him not returning to the legislature until November or before Christmas. And I think he got called on that a little bit and had to be reminded that he had committed to reopen the legislature on October 23rd. So we are hoping that he stands by his commitment of reopening on October 23rd. How would that shift work if he isn't to be the premier, if it is to be Blaine Higgs, how would they make that transfer of, of power, I suppose? So what I understand, and I am not a constitutional expert at all, you know, despite the fact that I'm a lawyer, I've got some knowledge about the Constitution, this is a very specialized field. So from what I've been informed and what we've been informed is the goal of the Lieutenant Governor is to maintain um, security, stability in government. So she offers first to the Premier the opportunity to form a government. And if he is not able to create a stable government, then she will give that offer to Mr. Higgs, the leader of our party, because we do have 22 seats. No matter what, third parties were a big factor in this election. They were. So going forward, how, do you, how does your party work with the People's Alliance, with the Green Party, to get things done? You know, if you remember, I think the last time I was here, I talked about how we're a big tent party, and we really are, and we are open to what is best for New Brunswick, and that is completely our focus. And if we can work with others to move New Brunswick forward, then we're willing to do that. You know, I looked at the paper uh, just the day before yesterday, so Wednesday, I haven't got the paper yet today, uh, but I, on the front page of the Telegraph Journal, there was an, two articles about the economic state of New Brunswick and what kind of critical situation we are in right now. So we are going to have to work as a group to deal with these issues. I mean, Ottawa is concerned about where New Brunswick is going. And what I learned when I was at the door of voters was that voters are concerned about where New Brunswick is going. So if we can work together as a team to improve the economy, then we've got to do that. And I don't see where we should be split on party lines. Um, language is playing a huge factor in, in what people are talking about in the media anyway. I wanted to hear your insight um, just from how I suppose the People's Alliance in particular is being painted by some 
as an anti-bilingualism party. Do you think that's the case or is it something that's rooted more in practicality? I don't want to pick on you when I say this. I think some of it is um, exaggerated by media. I think that when you talk to the people of New Brunswick, we really just want the best for this province and that we have more in common than we have different. And that's what our focus needs to be. And someone told me a little while ago, yeah, but that doesn't make for a good news story. And I think that that's the sad truth. Yeah. But we have to stop focusing on the differences and start focusing on what unites us. Do you think there is a strategy in place to polarize people based on that issue? And, and if so, why? I would hate to think that. I really would. But what I do know is that our party is very much focused on bringing New Brunswick together. We're better as a, as a team, as a group. There are, um, I think, a um, representative of the Conservative Party who said he doesn't want to align with the People's Alliance um, due to their stance on language. Well, I think that there's a lot of fear. That's what happens when there is uncertainty. And right now, this is uncertain times. And so we do have to be very cautious moving forward to not exacerbate and grow that fear because that's the last thing that we need. We need stability. Mm -hmm. So how in a, in a platform like this where we want to get you to clarify things for people, where do the progressive conservatives stand in terms of um, language issues and, and what's being said in the media right now? I think what's important is the communication. And so my priority as an MLA, as the representative for Fundy the Isle of St. John West, is to continue to be accessible. Mm -hmm. And I think all politicians need to make themselves accessible. It goes right back to what we were talking about when I said we're going to continue to go door to door. People want to be heard. They don't just want to be heard. They want to know that they're being listened to. Mm -hmm. And that's what's key. And where we start to deteriorate as a society is when we're not being heard, when we're not being listened to. That's when we react and instead we, much, we need to be much more proactive in order to have success for the province of New Brunswick. Now, no matter what, it's going to be a minority government. How are the Conservatives preparing to, to have power in that kind of a scenario? So we're a great bunch. <laughs> I'm a little bit biased, but I really like the team that we have in place. I'm a little sad there were uh, several other members who were on our team who were not successful at being elected, and I'm sad that they have now gone. But we're regrouping, and we still have a great bunch that have been elected. And we're really willing to listen and work with others. I think what is different about our group than maybe some others mm -hmm. is we're not focused on ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's a lack of arrogance, in my opinion, and I keep hearing that word, don't you, in the media about arrogance of some individuals, and I don't see that in the PC team. So we don't have our own agendas, our own personal agendas. Mm -hmm. We do have a collective agenda, mm -hmm. which, which is to improve New Brunswick. What about the Green Party and the carbon tax? Can you tell me a little bit? I know they haven't um, ruled out talking to the Conservative Party about figuring out a plan to deal with um, where they stand and where you stand on the carbon tax going forward. So I hope I can say this and I don't get myself in trouble. Not with you, with others. <laughs> so one thing that we have done is we have sat down and we have looked at the platform of all the other parties, political parties in the province of New Brunswick, and there are a lot of things that we have in common. Mm -hmm. So we need to focus on those things, and the Green Party being one of them. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of uh, their position on carbon tax. It's fairly complicated, and, and all the people watching would probably be sleeping by the time we're done. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we're not... There, there are still some real common things that we can focus on and move forward. Look, I'm a lawyer, okay? I do a lot of family law. I do a lot of divorces. When you're divorcing people, clearly they have differences. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we sit down and we say, okay, what issues can we work together on? Where are the things that we have in common? How do we move forward? And then we really listen to what each side is saying to get to the underlying of what, what really is in people's hearts. And we need to do the exact same thing in government. It's simple. It's a good analogy. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Could there be a positive 
outcome of having a minority government? Oh, Could I it be so. that we maybe take more things into consideration? And we have to. I mean, look what percentage of the province voted for third parties, mm -hmm. right? So in many ways, and I've heard a lot of people say it, this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. As long as we can have the stability, mm -hmm. because what we do not want is we don't want to be running into another election, you know, every 18 months. And I don't say that um, just because I don't want to go knocking door to door. Right? Door to door in the winter sounds really <laughs> awful, doesn't it? I need snowshoes, uh, big winter coats. It's, it's not because I don't want to do that, but it's just not good for us as a province. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched there be divide in our riding during the last election, and we don't need that. So key number one is stability. Let's mm -hmm. keep a government in place. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great that we're going to have many voices at the table mm -hmm. because we have many voices here in New Brunswick. So it reflects who we are. Will it change your platform as a party to have these voices having more seats? Um, will, you listen, will you modify things that you've already decided upon perhaps and and take their their stances into account more so than maybe if you add a majority it might i can't really say but the more that the more people you can listen to the more you mm -hmm. can learn and we're not close to learning um, what have your experiences been thus far in your position have you been to fredericton yet and we've been to fredericton a couple of times i spent all day in fredericton yesterday and uh yeah it was it was good. We have good, healthy conversations, and we really have a united bunch, right? There's all this conversation about, you know, people leaving the party and crossing mm -hmm. the floor. We're a very united team, and, and it's exciting. Do you think that is played out a bit too much in the media? Because I've started to speculate, someone's going to walk from this party to that. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, but yet it's a real thing, because many of us have been contacted about okay. crossing the floor. Really? And or or doing something different, maybe forming a new party. You know, there's all these conversations, and for myself, I've been very clear. This is the platform that I ran on. Mm -hmm. People elected me when I said this is what I was going to do. I'm not going to change that now. I'm going to continue to stand with the team that I ran with. But after you hear it so many times, it does make you think, you know, mm -hmm. I have picked up the phone a couple of times and said, how's it looking for everybody else? Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're, we are all still very united and that's refreshing. But there are behind the scenes sort of pressures possibly. Absolutely. And oh, is it no place question. from Absolutely. another party? Would it be another party talking to an MLA from a different party asking to walk over? Yeah, it's um, my experience is that it hasn't really been top down. Um, that it's you know other party figures who mm -hmm. are involved in those conversations, but it's absolutely real and, and it's mm -hmm. totally happening. With the one seat difference, I can imagine, mm -hmm. because it could make the entire swing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah could. Yeah. So, when there is that third party factor with voters, um, what do you think that says about the province right now? That the Green Party and the People's Alliance did so well. Um, you know, it's three seats, but it is a sign. Six all together, right? Yeah. What does that mean and, and what do you take from just seeing that in the province? What I heard at the door and what I saw from the results of the election is that people are tired of old politics. And I think that is the other reason why we did so well in front of the Isle of St. John West. I do believe that I represent something different. I am not old politics. And people, you know, when even at the door would say to me, you don't look like the average politician. And I'd say, no, I, I don't, and I don't think I am. And I'm not going to do politics the old way. In fact, that's what the PC party ran on. We're not going to do politics as usual. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think we're tired of the old systems and we're looking for something new. What would you say are the biggest misconceptions about the Conservative Party? I think a lot oh. of people tend to, Canadians especially yes. because we watch so much American news, often tie them to the Republican Party and see them as sort of reflections of one another. But Maybe. Uh, I think that misconceptions, people think we hate the environment, right, and that we're only about big business. People think that we don't believe in social programs and uh, that we're right-wing freaks maybe I think you know and that we don't like women there's all these terrible misconceptions about the progressive conservative party in my opinion and clearly we're not that way 
we like to just balance our books at the end of the day, right? We like to stay on budget. We like to have a plan and we like to follow it. Yeah, we like consistency. Speaking of women, has it, I know a lot of media are making a big deal about you as a woman in politics. Has that question started to get on your nerves at this point in the game? I don't even understand it, right? I, before I got elected, somebody said, wow, you'll be really making a, a change for your riding if you're elected. And I was like, yeah, because we've been conser or liberal for so long. And they stopped me and said, no, because you're a woman. Mm -hmm. And it never even occurred to me, like, why are we talking about this? I'm not saying vote for me, I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm saying vote for me because this is what I'm going to do. So I hope that I got elected, not because I was a woman, but because I was the right person for the job. I would hope so too. <laughs> it's a weird thing to celebrate that 11 women are voted. I should hope so, but I should also hope that we're not voting for, I wouldn't vote for someone just because she's a woman. I would never vote for someone just because they're a woman. And I also don't want to celebrate other people voting for people just because they're women. I hope that their ideas were what got them in office. And yeah, and I don't want to be appointed to any positions or any roles just because I'm a woman. I want it to only be because I am the right person for that job. Do you think there's a shift, maybe, or maybe not a shift, but do you think that because of the focus right now on equality, that everything from the Me Too movement in the States to how we're dealing with like a lack of women in certain industries has made people focus on it too much perhaps do you think that has a disadvantage to equality in the sense that it's an annoying thing to be constantly pointed out a, wo a woman can do <laughs> something is. look it at is. that look at oh that. people trusted her enough to vote for her good for you you're a woman you got elected right? it's 2018 yeah, yeah it uh it's baffling to my children mm -hmm. right i have a boy and a girl they're 12 and 13 and my son doesn't get it. He doesn't understand the whole fight like a girl message. He's like, why? You know, it's, it's totally lost on him. And I'm glad it's lost on him mm -hmm. because we're not raising them that way. We're raising them as though they're completely equal. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're gonna see that shift at some point in time. Yeah. Now, I understand I do get treated differently because I am a woman. Right. And that's always going to happen but I don't want to be advantaged in any way or given special whatever just because I'm a woman. To me, there's a, no, but it, there's a feeling of when it's celebrated, it feels like there's possibly a general consensus that we're somehow incapable. So therefore, right. Right. I was in chapters and I saw a section of the <laughs> bookstore that said, Funny women, books by funny women. So I, I asked, I'm looking for the funny men section. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel it bad. It doesn't exist. I feel bad for men sometimes, yeah. right? But sometimes that spotlight on look at women are doing it is, yeah. is almost, uh, I think it detracts from the fact that of course we are. I mean, we bring something different to the table, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel bad for men sometimes. Right? Yeah, you know, where's the funny men section? And the article is 38 men elected. Exactly. <laughs> I was looking for it. No, you didn't find it, did you? Yeah, Big day for men. Big day for men in New Brunswick. <laughs> um, how did being a lawyer prepare you for what you're about to, well, are starting and are about to start now with your political career? Well, people do keep asking me about what's it like now that you're a politician and or wait until you see. Uh, I'll give you an example. They say, well, you know, people are going to be contacting you all the time, all hours. You're not going to have your privacy. Over the weekend, I was away with my family and I haven't gotten away with my family at all for the last couple of months because we've been really busy. And uh, I was sitting with a group of people and we were all just sort of hanging out on Friday evening and my phone rang and it was like 7.36 and I glanced down and I looked and I saw who it was and the man beside me said, are you gonna answer that? And I said, oh, well, it's a client. You know, so I'm used to people calling me at 7.36 on a Friday night when I'm out with my family. That's, that was a lawyer situation. And so I'm used to that. I'm used to people needing me on the weekend and in the evenings and having demands of my time. But that comes with the job. Mm -hmm. And I signed up for this job knowing that that was part of it. So I don't mean to sound critical that somebody was contacting me on the off hours 
my only point is to say it came with the job of a lawyer and it comes with the job of a politician and it's not that much of a stress so stretch so I'm prepared for that I think what are some of the issues specific to your writing that you hope to to make important to you well there are writing issues and then there's provincial issues and a lot of them are the same people are really concerned about the economy and the future of New Brunswick they're concerned about having jobs for their children and opportunities for their children and so we can take it and we can focus it on the riding or we can focus it provincially it's really all the same though mm -hmm. I think that's huge people want their kids to live here mm -hmm. they want their grandkids to live here do you see a positive future for New Brunswick I do in the near future I think it's going to take a lot of time and so I go back to the question you asked me about being a lawyer and how that might have prepared me as a politician. You know, there are a lot of frustrations when you are a lawyer, you get caught into a system and you can't just change anything quickly and I know it's the same way in government. This is not going to change quickly but I am optimistic that it is going to happen. What I am concerned about is that if we focus on those things that divide us. If we don't start actively moving New Brunswick forward, I am concerned about where New Brunswick will be. This is a very critical time. We are the only province that the federal government is saying watch out for because economically they are in such a bad place that they may go under. So we need to take this very seriously what we're doing right now. Thank you so much, Andrea. I look forward to having you back. a whole half hour? Next time I get to sit on the couch. You do. Okay. <laughs> Problem? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was Andrea Anderson Mason, the new MLA for Funny the Isle St. John West. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Thank you for watching and please join us again on Southwest Magazine. Southwest Magazine is a news and public affairs production of CHCO TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.